Chapter 14. Holy shit. Nicole collapsed into her chair and pressed her palms on the table. Is this for real? Evan nodded. What are we going to do? He sighed. We have to stay calm, he said. Everyone is going to hear all about this pretty soon. We have to make sure things don't fall apart around here. Well, will we be okay? We have enough food, wood, gas, and other stuff to keep us going until spring. We'll be fine here at home. My parents will be fine. So will yours. What about Cam? What about some of the other people who aren't ready? We'll have to help them to make sure they stay warm and have food to eat. Jesus, winter has barely even started. What about the power? We'll have to talk about that tomorrow with council. There's only enough diesel to last until probably February at the latest. That's going at full power, though. Luckily, most people have been conserving like we asked. Some trucks were supposed to come to deliver more diesel, but we can't count on that now. It feels like the end of the world. Nicole stared into the darkness out the window over Evan's shoulder. Don't panic. We'll figure this out. Look at us here in this house. We're always ready for this kind of thing. It's not us I'm worried about. Evan walked around to her side of the table and wrapped his arms around her. He bent down and kissed her cheek softly. She sniffed back tears and squeezed his arm. We'll be all right, he whispered. She pushed back from the table and embraced him. Her long black hair draped over his hands where he held her close. <clears throat> she let go and stepped back, leading him by the hand out of the kitchen. He turned off the light on the way out and followed her to the bedroom. Their love for each other had been with him since childhood and it had been physical for nearly a decade. The only person each knew intimately was the other. They had hardly even been apart. Nicole had left the reserve after high school to pursue a diploma in early childhood education in the city to the south. But two months in, she was homesick with few friends outside of kids from other First Nations. And she returned to Evan and their community for good the following spring. Nicole took off her clothes in the darkness and heard Evan's belt unbuckle and zipper come down on the other side of the bed. She climbed into bed, eager to feel the skin of her lover against hers. They embraced under the thick covers, taking refuge in their warm pocket of sanctuary from the dangerous outside chill. They stoked the fire that began between them all those years ago.